What is up you guys, you're welcome to Trade Your Secret. Before I get started with today's video, if you can please give this video a thumbs up. I post a video on contemporary and designer fashion daily on the channel, so I would really appreciate you guys subscribe to the channel. And today we're gonna be doing a new segment on my channel called This or That, which are items that are very similar or kind of have the same aesthetic in between either or. So I, today's version of it is gonna be more of a core one, it's gonna be more of a classic one, and then I can do more of a trendy version or more kind of seasonal one. I will say I'll leave everything linked down below that I'm talking about, but I am not by any means putting down any brand or making a brand seem less than because of a price point. Um, I just have different alternatives. Some of them I prefer the more higher price point. Some of them I prefer the more lower price point. So I just think it's a good compare and contrast. So if you are considering either or item, thoughts and my opinions on why I can prefer one item over the other, putting down any brand because it's a lower price point because that's definitely not me. But I did want to disclose that and let's go ahead and get started with today's video and definitely let me know if you want to see a part two to this so the first one that i have guys is going to be um this or that which is going to be the louis vuitton never full which is going to be the classic one in the mm size i was looking at the prices of a lot of these items because you know i kind of have an idea how much they cost but a Louis Vuitton Neverfull is $1,540 and with tax that's about $1,700. That's actually insane. I remember when the Neverfull was still under $1,000 many years ago. I remember when it was even $700. So it basically has doubled in price within the last 10 years. But we have the classic Louis Vuitton Neverfull. It comes with a beautiful pouch with it. Get them in all the fun colors and sizes, whatever you want. But the one that I'm going to compare to is going to be the MCM List Tote, which is going to come in at $650. And for both of them, I am going to prefer the MCM List Tote. And the reason why I prefer the MCM List Tote a little bit more over the Neverfull, first of all, the canvas on the MCM is coated a little bit more than the Louis Vuitton Neverfull. When you feel both of them, they're both very soft, they're both very malleable, but I find that the MCM has a lot more structure. So if I were to put a laptop, if I were to put a book, if I were to put a little bit more heavy weight things at the bottom, it's not going to sag nowhere near as a Louis Vuitton Neverfull. I can literally put my cell phone on the Louis Vuitton never full and it will sag. I like that the MCM list will have more of a stronger base to it than the Louis Vuitton never full. Also as far as the pouches I kind of prefer the MCM one because it is going to be a little bit larger and it's going to be I don't know I think it looks more cuter as a wristlet than the Louis Vuitton never full. Never full one is just a little bit more smaller. I find that it looks more cute kind of like as an inside actual on the inside to kind of put your receipts or maybe put a little bit of bits and bobs. I definitely do prefer and I can see the MCM list tote pouch working a little bit more as maybe a little bit a little bit as a cute clutch a little bit more as a running errand i think they're both great i think at the end of the day if i have to pick one i definitely do prefer the mcm list toe not only is it literally more than less than a price and that the canvas is a little bit better quality i like that it has more sturdiness to it i like that the pouch is a little bit larger and I like that the MCM list toe isn't as saturated as a Louis Vuitton Neverfull. Louis, I've always liked the MCM list toe, and this is something that I can definitely add into my collection. And if I were to add an MCM list toe, it would definitely be the black one. Um, I do like the cognac, I do like the red one, but I'm a little bit of a basic Betty, so I probably will pick the black one. And if I were to pick a Neverfull, I'd probably get the Damier Abin, just because I don't have to be worried about the untreated leather. This and that, I like both of them, but if I'm gonna pick one, I'm definitely gonna pick the MCM list toe. This one, which is going to be the Coach Emery bag versus the Emrys Evelyn. So the Coach Emery bag did get discontinued, but you can find them at the Coach Outlet and you can find them uh, pretty discounted on the pre-love market. I'll make sure to leave some down below, but the MSRP on it is $395. It comes with a bunch of colors. It's a very nice and functional handbag. And the reason why I kind of prefer the Coach one over their Hermes one, something about the Hermes H, how it's perforated, it kind of gives me kind of more summer vibes. I don't know, I think perforated in general whatever reason it just gives you more summer vibes and for me i definitely want something that's more uh, that looks more timeless that's a little bit more sleek i wish that the h was maybe incorporated a little bit different i've tried getting into the hermes evelyn and it just not had worked out for me so therefore the alternative is going to be the coach emery bag and i definitely prefer the coach emery bag it's 395 versus 33.75 it's literally almost 10 it's almost 10 times less than a price since it is discontinued i'm pretty sure you can find it for even a better better price out in the pre-love market 
market that in this round i think the coach emery bag definitely takes the win i love the dog tag i like that the strap is adjustable i like that i just like a little bit more of the cleaner look i think the hermes has definitely more of that hermes vibe to it which i like and i appreciate I definitely do prefer more of the sleek and minimalistic vibe of the coach emery bag a lot more than the hermes evelyn so um the coach emery bag is definitely going to take the win for this or that i definitely do prefer that one over the Hermes Evelyn. Next alternative is going to be the Veronica Beard Miller Dickey jacket. I actually used to have this one. I bought it in like in a size too big. And so I ended up selling it to one of my friends. And so she has it, she loves it, she enjoys it. I'm wanting to, I want to add it back into my collection in my correct size very, very soon. Uh, but I want you the picture of me wearing the blazer. I love the blazer, I think it is so beautiful. I love the buttons, I love the fabric. I love that it was more of a quarter sleeve, that it didn't go all the way long. So I find that my I can show my arm candy, I can show a little bit more of my wrist, a little bit more things that I'm wearing. And the alternative is going to be the Balmain blazer. Obviously the Balmain blazer has always been talked about. When you see the Balmain blazer, you just think of, it's just very classic Balmain. You think, when you think of Balmain, I really don't think of handbags, I don't think about shoes. I think about couture and I really think about that beautiful Balmain uh, well-tailored blazer. I will say that Veronica Beard blazers fit like a glove. I have many Veronica Beard blazers in my wardrobe and I live and I breathe in most of them. And there's some that I literally wear on a weekly basis. The Veronicas in general, they're actually two sisters-in-laws. And I think that they both have really taken a good control of the brand. And I, I love the Veronica Beard as a brand in general. Our, the Veronica Beard blazer is done super, super well. I think it's super classic. I think it's super core. It comes in at $695 versus the Balmain uh, $2295. So if you do want that kind of Balmain look with the buttons, I think it's still distinct a little bit different where you can tell that it's more Veronica Beard. Uh, Veronica Beard is a very high quality brand. Anything bad to say? I definitely will say um, if you do want that kind of like Balmain look, I think that the Veronica Beard blazer is a really great alternative um, and, it, it, and it's a beautiful blazer. I think it's spectacular and what I like about the Veronica Beard ones is on the inside, the zippers on the inside so you can buy dicky inserts, so you can put like a hoodie, you can put like a little bit of a moto jacket so you can definitely customize it. You can give it a, such a dressed up look or you can put like a little hoodie like which I do with a lot of my blazers you can give it a completely different look. This one, as much as I like the Balmain blazer, I definitely will say the Veronica one because the Veronica Beard one, I can't insert those dicky inserts from all the other Veronica Beard jackets that I have and it kind of goes into that Veronica Beard ecosystem so I definitely do prefer the Veronica Beard one and like I said I used to have it and I will be repurchasing it and adding it back into my collection. Very very soft alternative which is going to be the Sam Edelman Lorraine loafers and we're going to be comparing them with the Gucci loafers. So the Gucci loafers have had quite a bit of price increases. I remember when these ones were like in the little bit of the high 500s. Now these ones retail for $830, which is insane. It's about $900 with tax. I actually recently got these resold around Christmas time and I love them. I love me a good classic Gucci loafer, but I can see where these ones are very expensive. Even for me, that's why I ended up getting them resold versus buying them brand new again is because they're so expensive. That's $900 on a pair of shoes. Um, yes, it's quality. Yes, I will have it forever, but it's $900. $900 is $900. I'd much rather spend that on an accessory or a piece of ready-to-wear, but sometimes for shoes, um, I'm a little iffy, but I'm glad that I have a few Gucci loafers in my collection, so I feel like I don't have to feel like I have to repurchase them anytime soon, but if you don't want to do the Gucci loafer, I think that the Sam Edelman Lorraine one is a really great alternative, and the reason is... Um, you can definitely give it, it definitely has the vibe of the Gucci where you can definitely bring this one down and you can wear it kind of more as a mule. You can do it for this one right here. Um, what I like about this Sam Edelman one is that the sole is very nice and very comfortable. I am somebody that has a very wide foot. Something like this is very comfortable. It fits very well and I really, really like it. I love the little horse bit detail. I like that it comes in a bunch of colors. It comes in a lot more colors than the Gucci loafers in general and they're just really comfortable. So maybe if you want to get into the loafer, maybe you don't want to go Go in and shell out $900 with tax on a Gucci loafer. I think that the Sam Edelman Lorraine ones are very comfortable. I think they'll serve that kind of a horse fit look. And I think that they're a really great price point. They're $130. You can literally get them in a bunch of colors. And they do tend to go on sale quite frequently. You can find them for anywhere from like 30 or 40% off, even on the Sam Edelman website themselves. I will say, um, I definitely have been using more of my Gucci's than my Sam Edelman ones. I'll be 100% honest. I'm glad to have a classic brown loafer. I've worn these ones a few times and I do really, really like them. 
Um, now that I have a little bit more brown back, then I'm gonna be wearing a lot more creams during the summer. These ones will go really well with a lot of the brown handbags, like my Royal Moon bag, so I'll definitely be using these ones a little bit more in the summertime. So they're both really great options if you're considering them. Um, but you know, if you want the Gucci, get the Gucci. If you want the Sam, get the Sam. I have both. I think they're both really, really well. I will say I do use my Gucci ones a little bit more because I don't have these ones in black. If I had these ones in black, I'd probably use them uh, just as much as my Gucci's, but I really like them and they're a really great alternative. Uh, Gucci loafer versus the Sam Edelman Lorraine loafer. They're both really great choices, but um, this one's just gonna be whichever one you choose. But like I said, I do use the Gucci one a little bit more. Um, the next one, which is, isn't going to be like such a comparison, like super alike alike, but I will say it because I do get questions about this one all the time. And it's going to be the Dior Book Toe in the classic size, which is the one that I used to have. That one right now, as I'm recording this video, retails for $32.50. And I'm gonna be comparing it with the Saint Laurent tote that is $12.50. And the reason why I prefer this one over the book tote, like I said, they're both they're both basically fabric totes with top handles. But the reason why I prefer this one is that I love the little three snap closures in them. I love that you can snap it open, you can snap it closed. It's a little bit more secure. I find that this one fits a little bit more. Like it is not, the base of it is not super big on it. It's a little bit more on the slimmer side. Um, I just love the colors on this one a lot more. And the Dior Book Tote doesn't come in black oblique. And so some people really want black or they really want a certain color. The main ones that they usually have every season is gonna be, it's gonna be like a maroon one and kind of like a beautiful kind of royal navy color. And some people don't want those colors. So I like that the Saint Laurent ones, they do come this one in a very variation throughout the seasons, but I just have the classic kind of lighter cream with more of a, a darker cream on it. And I also like how this one has a zipper on the inside as well. And it's a very generous size. So you can fit quite a bit of stuff in it. The Dior Book Joe has no compartments on the inside, so it's literally an open one. I live in Texas, so for me, it's like to the car, to the place, to the place, to the car. So I don't really have to worry about people pit pocketing me. But, you know, if you do live more in the city, maybe in New York, Chicago, or in Seattle, wherever you live in, where maybe you do have to take public transportation, maybe you are in the city where somebody can, you can be very vulnerable, people grabbing stuff. I think that this one's a really great one, especially for travel. I have used this one in the on flights. I've used my book tote on flights. And I will say I feel more secure using this one just because, you know, I don't want stuff to fall down and stuff like that. Normally with the book tip, when I would travel with it, I would bring it with the dust bag. And when I put it under my seat, I would grab the dust bag and I would put it, the opening it, I would put the dust bag like that and close it at the end. So I know all my stuff is safe and secure. For this one, yes, things can kind of come off, but the, the things that I usually carry, you know, if I have jewelry, I put it in a jewelry box, which is to me larger. If I have a sunglass case, it's gonna be a big sunglass case that holds multiple sunglass case. If it's my laptop, it's a big laptop. So things aren't really gonna fall off here and it's pretty secure and I love the handles. I love everything. So if you are considering the book tote or the St. Laurent tote, Honestly, I've really been enjoying my time with the St. Laurent tote. I think it's so beautiful. I think it's so impeccable. And I honestly feel like you can never go wrong with it. So I will say for this round, and I've had both of them, I definitely do prefer my St. Laurent tote a lot. And ever since I got my St. Laurent tote last year, I have used my St. Laurent tote a million times more than my Dior book tote. And that's why, unfortunately, my Dior book tote got sold in my collection. So, you know, I did enjoy my time with it, but I will say the St. Laurent one is definitely the one for the win. It's kind of classic comparison is going to be my classic coach Cassie. This one comes in black and in white, but they do do different versions of it throughout the time. And I'm going to be comparing it with the Emprunt Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse, which currently retails $24.50 as the recording of this video. Um, the reason why I prefer the coach one is I just like how it's more clean. It's more minimal. It doesn't have the embossed monogram, also monogram all over the place. I just like how very cream it is, even if it's the classic black one. Um, I just love how crisp and clean it is. I love the top handle. I love the classic coach tag. I'm always a big fan of dog tags from coach in general. I love the class. I like that it's lying on the inside. And I've always, you know, I remember when this back first came out, a lot of people were comparing them and were saying that coach was copying Louis Vuitton. And that's actually not true. Coach had a version of this bag many years ago, way before the Pochette Matisse came out. And just something about the Coach Cassie's I've just always loved, I've always gravitated towards. And um, if you do like, like this style where, you know, you do have a cute back pocket, you have a strap which you can make it crossbody, shoulder bag, or a little top handle moment, where it's versatile and maybe you don't want to buy the Louis Vuitton one or you just don't like the Louis Vuitton one, 
I think that the Coach Cassie is a beautiful one. It has three. So on the inside, there is a zipper in the main one right here. I think that they're both really great options, but if I were to pick one, I think that the Coach Cassie is definitely going to be the one for the win. She is so beautiful. She is stunning. Like I said, she comes in a lot more colors other than white. So if white is not your cup of tea or cream is not your cup of tea, out of this or that, the Louis Vuitton Mache Petit or the Coach Cassie bag, I definitely do prefer the Coach Cassie bag a lot more. So Coach Cassie bag is definitely for the win. This one is going to be the Coach Saddle bag, which comes in at $450. And it is right here. She is on her glory. I really like the Coach Saddle bag when it first came out. I've always been a, such a big fan of it. I think it's so beautiful. I think it's so stunning. And we're going to be comparing it with the Dior Bobby bag. And the Dior Bobby bag comes in at $3,800, which is about $4,150 ish here in Texas with tax. It's about $4,000 and you have $450. So it's about $10 times less the price of the Dior one and for me the reason why I prefer the Coach Saddle one I just like how it doesn't really have the branding on it I just like that it kind of incorporates it but it's just it's such a sleek and minimalistic it gives me coach vintage vibes it gives me like true authentic coach like coach leather I just love it as much as I like the Dior Bobby $3,800 is a lot of money to shell out for a handbag like I said if you love something buy it but $30 is a lot to shell out for a handbag and Dior is a brand that frequently changes their styles, frequently changes things all the time. They are very edited, even when you go to their boutique. Their stuff is super edited all the time, so they're very easy to discontinue things or to get rid of things versus maybe more of a larger house where they have a little bit more options like a Coach, a Louis Vuitton, or a Chanel. I just think that Dior is a little bit more on the edited side. And so therefore, for me, I think over time, I think that the saddlebag will just look better. It will photograph a lot better. Like in 10 years from now, um, when I look back, which bag would I rather be photographed in? A Dior Bobby or even in the moment, a or a Coach saddlebag. And for me, I definitely do have to say the Coach saddlebag is definitely a, a beautiful bag. I think it's so gorgeous. And so for this round, I will say that I definitely do prefer the Coach Saddle bag over the Dior Bobby. Like I said, I think that they're both beautiful bags, but you know, my I have such a big heart for Coach. You guys already know this. Like, mi corazón, my little gay heart, definitely loves Coach so much. So Coach is definitely going to be for the win. Next alternative that I have is going to be Chanel Espadrilles, which comes in, I believe, at $725. And then we have the Tory Burch Ennis um, Espadrilles, and this one comes in at $228. So for me, somebody that has a wide foot, I don't fit into the Chanel Espadrilles. I remember when I tried it on the boutique, when I put them on, all my little fat was like hanging out. It was like quite embarrassing. It was a little funny. I find that Tory Burch just runs a little bit more on the wider side, and I find that they're a little bit more comfortable over time. So that one I have tried in a size, I believe 10 and a half, and it actually fits. It's a little tight, but definitely does not, all my fat does not hang out of it. Like um, Espadrilles and the ones that I tried from the Chanel Espadrilles were the classic black ones. What about me is I love Espadrilles. I love basket bags. I love Raffia. I love all those summer vibes. But one thing about that, all that stuff gets a lot of wear easily over time. Even if you take care of it, you can see the wear on it over time. So for me, I wouldn't want to spend, you know, $800 on a pair of shoes when I can get, you know, the exact same look um, and it'll hold up just as much or if not even a little bit better um, from the Troy Birch and its Espadrilles. So for me, I definitely do prefer the Troy Birch ones over the Chanel one. Troy Birch one's something a little bit more fresh. It's a little bit more newer. And yeah, I mean, as much as I like a Chanel Espadrille, A, I don't fit into them and B, you know, I don't think I would want to spend oh, $800 with tax on an Espadrille when I can just buy it like a designer sneaker. I might as well buy a designer sneaker, a Gucci loafer, something that I feel like I could wear all year round and something that will last a lot longer than an Espadrille, which is more kind of like a summery shoe. And like I said, Espadrilles, and if you get those babies in water, ooh, that will really mess up the shoe. Just Espadrilles in general are such a delicate shoe. And so for me, I'd rather have the Troy Birch NS1 versus the Chanel Espadrille. Um, the next one, which is going to be the Gucci Marmont, which retails for $490 versus the Valentino Belt, which retails for $580. For me, I'm definitely going to advocate for more of the price, pricier one for this one. The Gucci Marmont, in my opinion, I feel like it's a little played out. It can definitely look a little bit poserous. If you like it and you love it, for you, keep on wearing it. But I definitely do appreciate the Valentino one a little bit more. I like that it's not super saturated. I love the Valentino ones, especially the big, thicker ones. I love the classic size ones. I think that the V looks a little bit more classic. It looks a little bit more elegant. It doesn't look super played out. I like that they're a little bit more reversible. The Valentino ones are reversible versus the Gucci ones are not. So 
Anything that's more reversible is obviously going to be, you know, it's going to be more versatile. You get to use it a lot more. You can dress it up. You can dress it down. So for me, I'm always going to advocate for more versatility versus just a one use. If you get a Gucci belt, you know, you you have the black one, you just have the black one. But if you have a Valentino one, it's the black one, and you get to have the brown one. So I definitely do appreciate more of the versatility of it and since it's more versatile even though it is a little bit more it's about 90 dollars more you get to have another color and you get to have that kind of same look so for me i would much rather it be reversible and pay a little bit more than for it not to be reversible and i'm just stuck with one color i'm always about options i like to change my moods dress up dress down so for me i definitely will recommend the valentino belt over the Gucci Marmont belt all day, every day. Classic segment, definitely let me know if you wanna see a part two. It's gonna be going to be the Celine belt bag in the classic size that reaches for $21.50 versus the Senrev Maestra bag, which is $895. This one, it has kinda of like very similarities of it. For this one, I will say that the Senrev Maestra bag, I definitely do prefer a little bit more. I know on YouTube, people don't really care for Senrev. I do see a lot of negative things said about Senrev. Uh, I have tried them on at Neiman Marcus in the Houston store and I actually do quite like them I can definitely see the functionality especially for me that's something that I have my laptop I have a camera you know I'm always on the go I have paperwork to get done something like that I can definitely see myself shoving everything in there using it as a backpack and go and to the coffee shop or go and run a bunch of errands so I can definitely do see the functionality in that versus the Celine belt bag you can't really do that and I find that it's more, the Celine belt bag is made more for an everyday handbag versus the Maestro bag is more, you can use it as an everyday bag but it's more kind of like as a business bag, it's more as a more work appropriate. Both of them have very minimal branding but the Maestro bag just has something to it. I think the backpack feature is what really sells me on it and the space to put my laptop is what really sells me on it. So for me, I am gonna choose the Senrev Maestro bag, $895. I know they have a little bit of promotions here and there versus the Celine one that's $21.50. I think that the Celine boat bag is gorgeous, but I find that's more of a Percy purse versus the Senrev Maestro bag is more kind of like, oh, you can use it as a Percy purse or you can use it more as a business kind of occasion handbag. And so for me, I definitely do like more of the options and you know, it's more than half the price, it's like 60% less the price. So for me, I find that I would prefer to have the Sinrev one over the Celine one. And yeah guys, these are gonna be my this or that kind of alternatives. Some of them were in the contemporary versus designer. Some of them were designer versus designer. I would love to hear your thoughts and your opinions. Definitely, like guys, definitely let me know if you like this video of uh, this or that versus the alternative. Let me know if you wanna see our part two because I definitely, I can literally, think of 10 more items or 20 more items that I can compare and contrast versus you should get this one or you should get that one. Definitely let me know if that's something that you want to see. And I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love each and every single one of you. And I'll see you guys on the next one. And I'll leave everything linked down below. And muchísimas, muchísimas gracias. Y los vimos a la próxima, guys. Bye. Que se cuidan mucho. And aren't we here for this little leopard Versace moment? The one that I got at Nordstrom Mac. I think it is so cute. I'm wearing it with this Aritzia bodysuit. But like, look at the buttons. Ugh. Wow. Like, I'm just so here for it. I'm here for this little leopard, this little gay cheetah moment. I'm living for it. <laughs> Bye guys and thank you so much for watching.